So for today's tutorial, I wanted to talk to you about the most basic but also most important step for creating a great cinematic sequence. All the time I see edits and sequences that may have great filming and editing, but they don't necessarily make any sense. And that's because the order of the clips doesn't make sense. It's not intentional, it's not really thought out. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how to take all of your clips and decide on a very basic level what order you put them in on your timeline to edit that video. The first thing I do before I even import my footage into Premiere is rename all of the clips. This is helpful because it allows you to search for them in the media bin, but the really big thing that this is gonna do is scramble up those clips. So you're not gonna be tempted to edit them in the same order that you filmed them. Once I've imported my footage, the very first thing that I do is trim the clips and put them all on the timeline, regardless of the order that they're in right now. Basically, I drag everything onto the first track of my editor timeline, and then once I've got everything down there, if I see two shots that I want to go together, I drag them onto the second track where I'm gonna be putting my clips in order. So if I see two shots and I know I want this shot to go after this one, I'll just take those two shots drag them up to that second track and put one after the other. When I'm in this process of putting everything in order, I like to think of the sequence as having three layers of structure. The entire sequence, subsequences within that, and then the individual shots within each one of those subsequences. The best way I can exemplify this for you is if we think about a West Coast road trip travel video. So we have the entire sequence up at the top, everything that you shot on that road trip, and within that you might have a few different subsequences. So you might have one for the Pacific Northwest, one for San Francisco, maybe Yosemite, one for Death Valley, and within each one of those subsequences you have all of the footage that you have from that specific location. And the subsequences absolutely don't have to be divided up by different locations. For last week's video, I made an edit where I was shooting at this kind of like campground area next to the road. So I have shots from this camp structure and I also have some shots from the road itself. And those shots are divided up into two separate subsequences by location. When you're putting everything in order, each item on the timeline should relate to what's directly before it as well as what's directly after it. So each shot should have something to tie it to the shot before it as well as the shot that comes directly after it. And the same goes for the sequences that we just talked about. There's a ton of different factors that can tie two shots together, one of the biggest of which is camera motion. So if you have two shots where the camera's moving forward in both of those shots and you cut them together, that's gonna be a very smooth transition most of the time. And it's not just camera motion, similar color, composition, or subject matter can all tie two different shots together, as well as the opportunity for a transition or a match cut. And even if you don't have something that visually connects the shots, you can tie them together using sound design. In my 2018 video, I have three different shots from three different locations, but I tied all of those shots together using the water sound that goes behind them. You can also cut together some different shots of the same subject. So what I like to do is have three camera angles of the same subject, a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close-up shot. So we either go from wide to medium to close and get closer to that subject, or we start with the close-up and reveal it by going from close to medium to wide. No matter what you do, just think of it like you're putting together a puzzle. You have all these items and you know they go together in some way, you just have to piece it together and figure out what that order is. The absolute most important thing is to just never edit chronologically. What I used to do and what a lot of people will do is they'll take two shots, put them on the timeline, put a transition between them, and then move on to the third shot. And that's just not a good way to edit. Instead, just put absolutely everything on the timeline, then go through, put it all in the right order, and finally move on to those transitions and more involved editing. Not only is this process much faster, it also produces far better sequences. But that being said, I hope you've learned something new from this video. And if you did, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.